Hi, my name is Dave and I am Military Doll Armour. Welcome to my channel. In this week's video, I'll be painting this AF3 Club SDK episode 251 slash 11, which I built in my previous episode. I'm going to start by doing some distressing and post shading of the original paint colour, which was German Yellow 71604. I'll be adding some grey primer which is 71601. I'll be diluting this with some Vallejo airbrush thinners which is 71161 and some flow improver which is 71562. I mixed the colour in a little shot glass with a pipette. I wasn't very happy with the colour so I did a little bit more of the grey primer to let it down some more. I mixed the paint again with a pipette just to make sure I was happy with the colour, which I was. Then I added it to my airbrush and tested the actual consistency of the paint and my air pressure on my glove. I start by giving the, the kit an oval sort of mist coat with the colour that I've just mixed. Then I start doing some localised shading just using a piece of paper as a mask and getting into the edges where panels meet and sort of just making a nice sort of variance of colour so you can see the difference between the panels. I concentrated the distressing effect on the upper parts of the, the kit because that's where the sunlight would hit more and I wanted it to look like the camouflage was washed out by the sun. Once I was happy with the effect of the distressing layer, I moved on to the brown camouflage. I was using Camo Brown 71041 from Vallejo and because I wanted the washed out look, I decided to use some of the yellow paint mix that I had left to let down the brown paint and make it look faded. So I just added some drops of the camo brown to the paint cup to get the right, the brown that I wanted. As I wanted a soft edge camouflage, I decided not to mask off the vehicle at all and just do it freehand and also do it by eye. Um, I wanted the camouflage to be diagonally down the vehicle so that the lines would meet up further back on the other side so that it wasn't symmetrical on both sides and also I wanted to have the brown to be just a thin line down the edge of the green camouflage so that's why I'm doing the brown first then I'll freehand the green over it. Also, if I made any mistakes, I still had the, the yellow colour that I did the distressing with to, to clear up any mistakes that I made. I started off by outlining the, the sections I wanted in the brown colour, then filled them in and just moved around the vehicle systematically, linking up the colours and just doing a nice non-symmetrical camouflage pattern. I also move the vehicle quite a bit so that 
I reduce the chance of overspray by the angle that I'm actually applying the paint by. It just makes it a little bit easier to paint moving the vehicle around. To make it easier to paint I left the doors off and painted those separately and once I was happy with the actual camouflage pattern I moved on to the green camouflage which is Vallejo 71617 camouflage green I was happy with the the shade of this color it was wasn't green green it was quite faded so I didn't do anything to this colour just used it neat and just laid it down with some of the fillers and airbrush flow improver I just put the, the green colour inside the brown so it was a little bit showing I still had some of the brown mix so I could go back over and fill in the actual line itself if there wasn't enough of it showing. And again I just moved around the kit systematically filling in all of the camouflage colours, moving the kit around, making it easier to apply the paint without any overspray. Once I'd finished applying the green paint, I wasn't very happy with the actual colour of the green compared with the brown. So I decided to paint the brown camouflage again, but just using the colour directly out of the bottle with a bit of mixing with the thinners and the flow improver, which was Camo Brown 71041. And I just went over the existing lines and expanded them a little bit as well and just followed the green line to make it have just a little bit of an outline. Once I'd completed the, the brown colour on the entire vehicle, I moved on to chipping, but here are some stills of the kit with the camo pattern finished. I don't actually have any of the, the dark yellow in a not an airbrush paint so I used some white watercolours which is quite a thick paint it's in a tube and then mix that with the camo yellow to make a nice shade of yellow for the, for the chipping. I started off with the with sponge chipping just put the paint onto a piece of sponge and then cleaned it off on my glove and applied it to the vehicle in the places that would see the most wear and tear 
like over the sides of the top where the crew would get in and out and just around the front areas where you'd get you'd go through a bush or you'd get touched by trees or any stones and stuff or around the panel lines where the doors open and stuff and just did that over the entire vehicle then I moved on to brush chipping I'm really not very good at chipping which is something I need to work on which I'll try and get better on for my next kit but it's good enough I, I was happy with it I could have been a lot happy but it was good enough whilst I was doing the sponge chipping I put a bit too much paint on the sponge and there was quite a lot of it on the kit so I just took a, a paintbrush with a little bit of water on and I worked it off to do like a sort of a streaking motion moving it down to remove the majority of the paint and it looked alright after that and to be honest I'm going to be putting a top all on the back of it because the panel line isn't that good because of the problems I had building the kit again I just moved around the kit systematically doing an hour at a time and once I was happy with that I'd move on to the next one then I'd go back and check make sure that I was just happy with the overall effect and making sure I'd done enough chipping or not too much chipping next I moved on to the dark chipping colour which I use Panzer Races 70302 which is dark rust sometimes I add a little bit of black to it or a little bit of red to help what I feel like but this time I just used it straight up I start off again with a sponge just using a little bit of sponge with some tweezers and then cleaning the excess off my glove and I moved into using a brush and then filling in some of the gaps or sorry the centres of the lighter chipping colour that I'd done and again just work around the vehicle not doing all the chips just doing a few of them the bigger ones and also doing some just on their own so that you got some that go straight down to metal but the majority of them were just filling in little of the yellow chips And once I was happy with the effect, that was where I left it, didn't do too much, as or I don't think I did. It's meant to represent the vehicle that's been in Normandy for a little bit, so it's not seen much fighting, but it has seen a lot of movement around the bocage and stuff, so it hit a lot of trees and whatever, so it's meant to look a little bit worn. But this will be toned down with the oil weathering afterwards anyway, so it's best to do a little bit more, but it's just important not to do too much, which you, you can get carried away, but I'm quite happy with the end result. But I'll leave you with some stills of the, the finished kit or the kit in chipping. In next week's video, I'll be finishing this kit off. I'll be doing some mud effects and also adding a tarpauling and some storage and a little bit of detail painting. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've enjoyed making it. Please feel free to leave a comment or a like. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll see you in the next video.